Okay, I'm going to say this to everybody. You'll see this a lot. At a certain point, it won't matter if you do this. But we're going to get very, very technical about this issue of the entry because I really want you to see what's going on. And a lot of people present this way. Okay, they're trying to be circular. Okay, so if I come in to get you, I'm going to grab and you do that. It's too easy for me to do that. You're already anticipating where you wanted to go, so you're saying, oh, I'm going to be circular. Okay? Sword. Put him on the point. For one thing, that's why he grabs. I mean, if you want to know why he's grabbing, I'm putting him in a position where he better feel like he should grab. If he tries to punch me and bypass that grab, no, bypass the grab. Do be stupid. He's going to run into that. He has to deal with this. Okay? This, he can swat it away. He doesn't have to grab that. He just push it aside. Okay? So if I'm going to draw this attack right to the center, then we'll talk about what happens at this instant of contact. But don't start this way. It's too easy for them to get your backside. This is interesting, okay? I know I'm spending a lot of time on this, but actually, as we've talked about, this is what sets up the first instant of physical contact. And if you're already contracting, they have you. Okay? So a lot of you guys are here. Now, I like to use that shaking hands thing, okay? If, if my long lost friend were coming across the room to me, do I go, of course not. It looks stupid. You, you, would, you would go, that looks weird. What's going on? You'd go, hey, you reach out. You know how to do this. I know you know how to do this, okay? Okay, you reach out. This is like sword. This is my sword. This is the tip of my sword. You don't hold your sword this well. I mean, I hope you don't. You go, boom, and you put that tip out there. That's what I'm doing here. Okay? And I'm owning my space. You can define your space very small if you want to. Okay, I really don't want to take up too much room. I'll be like this. But then he gets to be big and own a lot of space, and that becomes a problem for me. So at least if you look at what happens in the basics, in your Kihon Waza, in Aikido, everything's large. You're learning how to accept conflict in an expansive and opening up way. Okay. So what happens is when I look around and I see people like this, you're already anticipating this conflict and you're already shrinking. Okay? Whole purpose of starting this slowly, piece by piece, is to get you out of that. So really extend. Okay? He can push all he wants here. I own this space. And in fact, he's owning his, but I filled that space enough that when he grabs here, my mind's inside. I can actually move them by shifting. Okay? So try this. Get in here and then just shift. No change in your arms or anything. Just shift and see if you have that direct connection to his center. Because you really can't do that if you're here. If, you, if you're already collapsed, you're going to try this and you're going to use your arm and there's gonna, you're going to feel this tighten up, you're going to feel this tighten up, and you'll feel your shoulder pop. If you look at me, my shoulder's not popping at all because I'm just extending. Your shoulder pops when you contract. I'm just extending and connecting it to the floor. Okay, go ahead. Guys, take a look. I, I really need you to understand this because this is, this is crucial. Anybody seen any films of O-sensei? Um, Doing, holding the Joe and four guys are pushing on it from the side, which as we all know is really impossible except that he did it. Okay. There was a whole discussion on Ike Web about how he did it. 
I cannot do four people, but I can show you at least the beginning of the basis of this. Okay? So, what most of you do, stand here, what most of you do, come from, come from the side, is you hold your hand out like this. Now, if he pushes, there's no structure. So somebody says, extend. I can't extend anymore. My arm's completely out there. But there's no. Okay. You're sticking this out, but there's no connection to the structure. Now try locking this into your structure. Just like if I had a sword, that hand would go boom, boom. And bend your knees and shift your weight forward and stream everything that you're doing with your body out that tip. So when he comes to push, okay, you see the difference? Now I can't do four guys. But if you start pushing, and push slowly. When you do this, if you do this with a partner, you do it slow so you can feel it. And then as you start to push, I start to shift my weight in and extend. So what he's trying to do, most of what he's trying to do is put energy that way. And because of my extension, I'm taking that and deflecting it out that way. So the harder he pushes that way, the more it wants to go that way. That's my understanding of what O Sensei was doing. Okay? Now, if I practice for another 40 years before I die, maybe I'll be able to do two guys. Okay? But that's it. So what does that have to do with this? That's what you're doing with your hand. If you stick this hand out like this, and he's a real attacker, he's going to swat it away and hit you. There's no structure there. So at his center, dead center, not this. The energy is mostly going that way now. There. And he tries to swat it away and he hits structure. He should bounce off that. You got to connect it to your body. Otherwise, it's just your arm hanging out there. Yes. Everything's shifting in. We'll get to this, what's happening with the body. There's a shift forward, just like rowing exercise. And then there's a very small twisting that's going on there. But it's not so visible because if I were twisting, I'd be giving it direction that would go that way. Okay? But the flow is from up from my foot, across my back here, and out. So if he tries to just swat it away, there's structure there. It's not just this thing hanging out. Okay? That starts to become a little more about... I have another block of instruction that I do. It's called the Principles of Aiki. And we do more about the mental connection. And then we start talking about some of this stuff. The entries thing is... Inevitably, I have to talk about some of that stuff because it, you can't do your body movement if you're screwing it up with the tension you're carrying, okay? But I don't want to spend as much time on those issues. So what I want to do now, okay, if you ski with a sword, you don't go, or at least hopefully not. I can't speak for you, but ski goes, goes out, and then it relaxes, just like a punch. Hits, hits at focal point, and then it completely relaxes, which is why you're ready to punch again. I'm completely ready to punch again. It doesn't go. Although some Aikido people seem to think it does. Okay. That's just not the way people punch. So what I want to do now is this presentation to him where I reach out and bring this here. By the time, just at the instant he touches, I want to be relaxing. I have them already. I don't know if you can see it yet, but I do. Okay. I'm actually on top now. Okay. So, I'm reaching out with my mind. And then I express that 
mental extension with a physical extension. I'm just expressing what my mind's already doing. Okay? And then at the point where he begins to respond to that, I am already settling into my space. And that's why I'm on top here. So, one of the fundamental things that happens on every entry is that I want to be able to rest my body weight on top of my partner. Now, I know you have Gleason Sensei coming, and he's going to talk about this because he learned from Yamaguchi. And Yamaguchi Sensei said that no technique should take more effort than the weight of your arms resting on your partner. Okay? That means they have to be resting on top of their structure somehow when their structure, when their alignment has been changed. Because I can rest my body weight on him just fine. And this is not going to produce technique. Okay? I can rest my 300 pounds on his shoulders, and if he's aligned, he can actually hold that up. So... We'll, t we'll get to the point where we talk about Ikkyo and why Ikkyo is the fundamental technique in Aikido. Suffice it to say at this point that what Ikkyo is, is Ikkyo is the fundamental spiral that we run that allows us to change the other guy's alignment so that we can rest our body weight on top of it. Okay? So we'll get to that and I'll talk about why different techniques are just different forms of Ikkyo. Right now, what I want you to do, start here. I'm going to reach out, and as he touches, I'm already just settling. Notice I didn't collapse. It's just I'm relaxing. There's a little wave to this. So I have him already. Feel it? See, before when I didn't do this, we hit and we were equal. I don't have him now. But right at the point of contact, right when we make physical, instead of pushing on him, instead of colliding our centers, remember I said, I want to own my space. And so does he. So if I try and do something to him here, I'm clashing with his center, whether I'm pushing or pulling. So what I want to do is not clash, which means just at the instant of contact, I want complete relaxation, and I want to settle into my space. What that does is it draws them into my space. He's mine now. Okay? So, now what we're getting, we have the kimusubi, because my mind is out here already. And then I'm expressing that with my physical extension, and that draws the response from him. And at the instant of the physical touch, we need to have the physical musubi. Okay, musubi, for those of you, you new guys who don't know what this is, literally means to tie the knot, but you can think of it as the connection. Some people talk about blending in Aikido. Blending is a, an English term that really doesn't translate very well to the principles that you're doing. Okay? What you want to be doing in Aikido, you have the key musubi where our attentions match. Almost like I start to resonate with him so I can feel what he's doing. And then as we touch, I want to physically join. And the Japanese term for this is itaika, single body. And what that basically means for us doing the seminar is that at the point where I establish itaika, he can no longer move separately from me. We have that connection. Right now, he can move. He can do whatever he wants, see? And I can too, and it doesn't necessarily produce anything over there. But at the instant when we join here, okay, if he pushes, it's going to instantly reflect someplace. Or if I move, it's going to instantly reflect. We are now one. So that's what we're trying to do, just from katatatori. I bet you didn't know all this was going on when you did this. You know, every day we do katatatori tenkan. We do that hundreds of times. This is what's inside that. Here. Look at this. I'm already on top. 
what you're going to probably do if you're newer is you're going to do one of two things. You're going to come here and you're going to push and tighten up in order not to collapse. Or I'm going to say relax and you're going to lose your extension because you're trying to relax. I can have my extension and be very relaxed. Okay? Just like when you go to hold your hand out to welcome in a friend, you're not doing that with your muscles tight. You don't go. <laughs> that would look like some kind of beginning Yoshinkan shake hands act. Okay? I mean, that's the way it looks in the books. They're actually much more relaxed than that, but it looks really rigid. Okay? I'm not doing that. I would reach out just like I was shaking hands, and it would be this flexible, and yet it's got tremendous strength in it. Now watch what happens when I relax here. Watch what happens to his structure. He falls into my space. That's all we're doing so far. Later we're going to give it direction. But right now I just want to join. I'm on top and he's not. I'm relaxed. He's still relaxed. I haven't done anything. I can, feel his, I can feel the floor through his structure, and he can feel it through mine. So the only thing that's really happened is that I brought him inside my space here. I'm inside his attack. Now I'm inside not just mentally, but physically. That's why he's jammed here. That's why I can go down, and he can't stop it anymore, because I'm inside that attack. Does everybody see that? If I'm outside, I can't do that. So my mind is inside this grab, and then I express that physically by moving out to there and then letting it relax. And now I'm on top. And just see what that feels like, okay? If you feel your shoulder muscles pop, you're pushing. 